Okay, with with several big sports stories going on and, and several major sporting debates, including the ownership of football clubs in this country, and with the Major League Baseball lockout just ending uh, last week, I thought I'd have a quick look at the uh, Fenway Sports Group. Now, they are obviously they own the Boston Red Sox and they own Liverpool Football Club, and we'll get to their controversies at the end of the video. But it is interesting to know that they own more than just the Red Sox and, and Liverpool Football Club. So let's break down uh, when they were founded, their takeovers, their involvement in sport and in media, and the success they have brought the teams that they own uh, on the field. Uh, they were founded in 2001. They were originally known as the New England Sports Ventures. And until March 2011, the key stakeholders, this is where it gets interesting, is John W. Henry and Tom Werner are the two major stakeholders, but minority stakes are head held by Les Oatkin and the New York Times Company. Now, New York Times Company, major media company, obviously the New York Times is one of the biggest North American newspapers. And so that brings them into the media realm, and that's important when it comes to uh, the New England Sports Network, where they have a majority stake of 80%. Now, they own the Boston Red Sox, they own Fenway Park, and they own the Salem Red Sox, their minor league affiliate. They obviously own Liverpool. But they recently bought, and this is where it becomes interesting, because the New England Sports Network is 20% owned by the Boston Bruins, but they bought a majority stake in the Pittsburgh Penguins at the end of last year. Could that be a conflict of interest? Now, the NHL has allowed that takeover to take place and to go through. Um, they've owned their, uh, their stake in the New England Sports Network for a very, very long time. But the uh, Boston Bruins and the Pittsburgh Penguins are rivals in the NHL, so that is a... If, from my view, a conflict of interest. However, the NHL has allowed their majority stake and their funding of the Pittsburgh Penguins to, to, to clear and go through. They also own a 50% stake in RFK Racing in NASCAR. Now, they purchased the Red Sox back in 2002. They purchased the Salem Red Sox and relocated them to Salem in 2007. So they've been involved in baseball for 20 years. They took their 50% stake in RFK Racing back in 2007 as well, so they were increasing their sports portfolio at the time, before going on to purchase Liverpool Foot Club, Football Club from fellow Americans Gillette and Hicks uh, back in 2010, where they also purchased the stadium as part of that takeover deal. Uh, that was, what, 12 years ago nearly, that's 11 and a half years ago. At the end of last year, they, they purchased a majority stake on the 31st of December. It was officially ratified in the Pittsburgh Penguins in the NHL. So they have their fingers in many sports. Now we look at the success they brought under their ownership of their various sports teams. Now the Boston Red Sox had not won for 86 years the World Series. Two years after being purchased, they won their first World Series of four they would win under the Fenway Sports Group in 2004. They followed that up in 2007 then in 2013 and most recently in 2018. So they've, they've been a very dominant side under the Fenway Sports Group, regularly making the playoffs and they've won the World Series four times. Liverpool Football Club is a little bit more interesting. The success came a lot later. They have obviously won the Premier League in 2019-2020. They've won the League Cup twice. And this is what's interesting. They first won the League Cup in 2011-2012, but they had to wait a further 10 years until this season, 2021-2022, to win their second League Cup. Of course, they won the Champions League in 2018-2019 and the UEFA Super Cup in 2019 and the FIFA Club World Cup in 2019. So in total, that is six trophies uh, that Liverpool have won under the ownership since 2010. However, between 2011, um, 2012 and 2019, there was no success. There was a barren spell um, until comparatively recently with their second League Cup win. Now, the controversy. Now, this is where I really want to talk about the controversy. Um, 2021, the attempt to set up as part of the European Super League based off an NFL style. So they attempt, they're one of the founding clubs of the European Super League and they're, they're a big driving force behind that idea and that plan. Um, the fan reaction and the threats of UEFA sanctions meant within about 48 hours the European Super League started to collapse. And this is a big talking point because not that long ago, uh, in the aftermath of this, UEFA have come up with their new format for the uh, Champions League going forward. And they've also brought in this season the, uh, the, the UEFA Conference League as well. So as a, an aftermath of the European Super League, yes, there was a massive fan pushback. Other clubs uh, within Europe were unhappy uh, with uh, this uh, power grab attempt by 12 clubs uh, initially, of which Liverpool were one. Uh, and then UEFA acted quite strongly, I, I believe, at the time in, in pushing back against by threatening to expel 
these clubs uh, from the Champions League and domestic league competitions. So it was badly handled, I think. While the idea has merit, it's been it's been on the cards for a long time. This idea, this idea of a European Super League, is not a new thing. It, it rears its ugly head every now and then, and whenever it rears its ugly head, they reformat the Champions League in response. So the, the powers that be, the politics within football, um, considering the COVID pandemic that we were coming out of, uh, it went down very very badly with fans, and it and it turned sour very very quickly. What has since transpired is a lot of the clubs involved in the European Super League are making massive record losses right now. Now, Liverpool did not disclose their profit and loss margins. The only club that was involved in the European Super League idea was that disclosed a profit was Chelsea. And look at the issues. And this is why I'm doing the video is the ownership of Chelsea. What happens with foreign ownership? Should foreign owners be allowed to, to buy football clubs, not only in England, but across Europe? And the debate about the fit and proper persons test. And this is why I decided to do this video. Now, the European Super League has been shelved, but three of the clubs involved, um, Barcelona, Real Madrid and Juventus, are still clinging to the idea that they can at some point get the idea off the ground. But every other club is withdrawn. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if it rears its ugly head again down the line and what fan reaction will be and what UEFA's response will be. But that was a, a controversial moment um, under the ownership of the Fenway Sports Group for Liverpool and Liverpool came out. A PR disaster. You could also look at the, the COVID pandemic and putting non-playing staff on furlough and the reaction that they received from that. Now, John W. Henry came out and issued an apology um, and, and, and completely misread uh, fans' feelings um, and, and, and the European fan feeling over promotion relegation, a, a, you know, a fair contest, because it was based on an NFL, NHL kind of style format um, it, it, with, with like a franchise system. That, that didn't go well down well with, with clubs. And there's been a drive for a 50 plus one ownership model with where fans have a say in the running of their football clubs. Moving on from that, we've done a lot of videos on Major League Baseball recently. Of course, the ongoing lockout that has recently ended. It lasted 99 days. And of course, the Boston Red Sox in recent years, very, very successful. One of the wealthier teams in Major League Baseball. And out of that lockout, the luxury tax and, and, and the haves and have nots. The Red Sox are one of the haves, and it was the second longest league shutdown in, in history. Uh, obviously, go back to the 94 95 players' strike that lasted a fair bit longer. Um, and again, the, 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 the breakdown in trust between fans, the league, uh, the players. Bearing in mind the, the Players Association, there's been, a, there's been a, a growing discontent in Major League Baseball. Um, for some time. And we can go again back to the COVID pandemic, sh the shutdown of the Major League Baseball season. It didn't even start at the beginning of the season and the resumption to play talks. And owners have, have come out looking quite, quite bad, I think, um, in relation to fans, how they perceive the sport. And it's been a PR nightmare for Major League Baseball. So and, and the players don't trust the owners. So while the Fenway Sports Group have been very successful and brought a lot of success uh, to the table with the Red Sox and Liverpool under their ownership in the last two decades, the last 18 months to two years, there's been a lot of controversy attached to the Fenway Sports Group in relation to how they you know, communicate with fans, um, their the, the ideas for, for taking their sports forward, positive or negative. And again, it raises the question of, OK, how much power do, do football club owners have within football? How much power should team owners in Major League Baseball have? And, 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 and are players adequately compensated? Are fans getting a fair deal? These kind of controversies do raise, you know, raise their ugly heads. And the fact that especially uh, during the pandemic, football clubs have lost and bled a lot of money. And the fact that Liverpool did not disclose their earnings during that period where all the other clubs, you could get a freedom of information request, you could find out how much they made or lost, um, didn't go down well as, as well when we're trying to break down the numbers and work out why the European Super League came to pass. We now know why. The clubs were basically broke. Um, uh, ticket price has been another controversy under the Fenway Sports Group in regards to Liverpool. Uh, fans have protested about uh, home and away tickets and, and, and prices. The FA brought in an away ticket price cap in response to fan protests. So their time at Liverpool, they've made some errors of judgment. Um, there has been pushback from fan base. Uh, with Major League Baseball, we'll have to see if fans respond positively to a resumption of play when the season begins in April in a month's time.
And and will ballparks be packed out again? Will there be a fan boycott in regards to how long the lockout lasted and the reasons why the lockout took place? But there we go. That's a quick look at the Fenway Sports Group. Um, and the only reason why I did this video is with what's going on in football, with what's going on in baseball. And because the Fenway Sports Group have, have key investments in those sports, I thought it would be a uh, a good time to look at their, their, their involvement. The fact that they also own, you know, a stake in a TV network as well um, is very, very interesting. Not a lot of other owners do have that. So they already have that media link and, and that can help with your public relations somewhat. What I find interesting is the NHL allowed their, their majority stake to be acquired of the Pittsburgh Penguins, considering that 20% of the Nesson network is owned by the Boston Bruins. So that is an interesting one. The NHL feels comfortable with that, with their majority stake in the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, the day-to-day -day decisions haven't changed. Mario, Mario Lemieux and, and, and their backroom staff have remained unchanged. They still have a say on hockey operations. However, it is interesting that they have a stake in a TV company where a rival team in the same league also owns a stake in that TV company. So it is interesting. I'm going to leave that there. Thank you very much for watching. Please place your thoughts in the comments section below. If you feel I've missed anything or glossed over anything, again, feel free to leave a comment in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching and I'll have some more videos for you very, very soon.